Each week, Chevrolet presents a story based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi, the men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. These dramatic stories are presented with the cooperation of our board of advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum. Tonight, Broadway Trust, starring Lloyd Bridges as Fred Tronell, co-starring Gene Lockhart as Reverend Alan E. Claxton, in a dramatization of his story. This is a story of faith, a true life incident based on recorded facts. The story begins in an uptown branch of a long-established New York bank. Draft's okay. Call down, Sal. Now, check your fellas out as soon as you're ready. Want to get home early tonight. Mr. Harvey. Oh, uh, hello, Fred. Uh, late for an appointment. Mr. Harvey, I've been waiting to hear from you all day. What about the, uh, the deal? The deal? Oh, you mean the option on the 96th Street property? Yeah, the 30 days are up today. Everything's all right, isn't it? Fred, I got bad news for you, Fred. The deal fell through. Fell through? Yeah, the uh, hotel people went cold at the last minute. Wouldn't meet the price, so yeah, we... But you uh, got the option money back. Of course not. 30-day forfeit clause. You mean my $5,000? Yeah, going down the drain along with my 10. Well, you got to take it in stride, man. It was a gamble. We stood to triple our money in 30 days. So we didn't make it. You said it was a sure thing. No such thing as a sure thing when you're trying to make a fast buck. You want a quick action, you got it. I'll let you uh, make it up on another deal. See you Monday. Parnell. What's the matter with you today? Act like you're in a trance. Sit down. There's been a slight change in our regular routine. On account of the holiday Friday, the bank examiners will be here tomorrow instead of Monday. Now, I gotta run downtown to the main office, so pass the word along to the rest of the staff. The uh, bank examiners tomorrow, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I'm off. Goodbye, Fred. And, uh, please extend my best wishes to Mrs. Trinnell. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good night, Mr. Selden. Sarlson and Company, uh, Mr. Six Sarlson, please. French Renault calling. He's out of town. Oh, when when is he expected back? Oh, it's not definite. Oh, then he uh, he might be back tonight, huh? I see. Well, look, this is very urgent. I'm a very close friend of his. Uh, can you tell me how I can get in touch with him by long distance? Oh, he's already left San Francisco. Yes, I have his home phone number. All right. And if you should hear from him in the meantime, would you have him call me, please? No matter what time it is. And if I'm not at home, I'll be at the St. Luke's Hospital. Now, that's right, room 128 at St. Luke's Hospital. Thank you. The hour has arrived. The car everybody's been waiting for is no longer just an idea. It's a beautiful reality. It's here, the 56 Chevrolet, and you can see it now. From its longer, more rakish hood to racy fender lines, Chevrolet breathes 1956 all the way in every line. Inside or out, here is dynamic beauty that says, the hot one's even hotter, and it is. For under the hood is a slumbering giant ready to awaken at your command. Chevrolet's 205 horsepower Super Turbo Fire V8 set the new Pikes Peak record and proved this winning combination of power and roadability means safer driving control. All the way, you'll be ahead with the great new Chevy, the newer, finer 56 Chevrolet. Take time to see and drive it 
at your Chevrolet dealers now. Dr. Sheely walked in with those x-ray reports. I could hardly believe it. I wanted to leap out of this bed and dance. That's when I called you. I couldn't wait till you got here. You didn't mind, did you, Fred? My. Oh, that's the news that we were waiting for. That's great, sweetheart. Well, but you did sound disappointed when you heard my voice on the phone. <laughs> were you expecting another call? Yeah, matter of fact, I was. I was expecting a call from Sig Sorosin. Sig? Well, how is he? Did you talk to him? Uh, no. Uh, he was in San Francisco. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Why? As if I didn't know. Seven months in the hospital. Four operations and nine million specialists. Oh, darling, I don't know how you've managed it all. I've managed. But that's all past now. The important thing is that you're well again. Tomorrow you're going to be home. Home. Oh, you don't know what that word means to me. Oh, hello, McNally. It's the old witch with the bad news. It's your last night to howl, Mr. Trinnell. This time next week, you'll be back in your cell. I'll uh, be back to say goodnight. I hope I didn't say anything to offend him. Oh, no, no, he's got something on his mind. I'm worried about it. Who can figure out husbands? I'll get your pills. Hello, Cato. Mr. Trinnell again. Any word from Mr. Sarlson? No word, Mr. Trinnell. So late now. Maybe not return until holiday. Yes, sir. I have your number here. Yes, sir. Call no matter what time. All right, thank you. What's the matter? Do I look funny? Oh, I love you so. Fred, I'm frightened. What is it? I just love you, that's all. I guess I don't tell you often enough. Are you in any trouble? Oh, look. Can't a guy tell his girl he loves her? I, uh, I better get out of it before they throw me out, huh? Oh, no, don't go yet. Wait till McNally gets here. Good night, sweetheart. Superintendent's apartment? Oh, Mrs. Garrett, I didn't recognize your voice. This is Mr. Trinnell in 48. I'm sorry to bother you at this hour, but uh, would you mind coming up here for a minute? It's rather important. Thank you. Oh, 
know. He may be ill. Uh, too ill to answer. Call the building superintendent, Mrs. Garrett. She has a key to the apartment. Call her. Oh, Mr. Trinnell? Mr. Trinnell? I'm in here, Mrs. Garrett. Oh. <laughs> Get away from that open window before you fall. Well, I was just fixing the drape. Get down, please. Oh, I'll send someone up in the morning to fix it. Oh, good. Yes, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'd like to have the place all cleaned up for my wife. She's coming home tomorrow. Not really. Oh, how nice. I'm afraid I'm not a very good housekeeper. You can see that it needs a pretty thorough cleaning. Oh, I'll attend to everything in the morning. And promise me you won't try to fix that drape again, Mr. Trinnell. I'll have the cleaning woman up the first thing in the morning. My, I never had such a fright. I'm still shaking. Mr. Trinnell does not answer, Mr. Sorrelson. No answer, huh? Well, it couldn't have been too urgent. I'll call him in the morning. If anything happens to him, I don't want to live. Oh, somebody help me. May I come in? Oh, Dr. Claxton. I heard your voice. Am I disturbing the patient? Oh, no, no, doctor, please. I'm Reverend Claxton, Mrs. Tronell's minister. Is it all right? Oh, I guess so. As you can see, she's awake. I was never so glad to see anyone. You must have heard my prayer. I was visiting one of our congregation down the hall. What's wrong? I'm not sure. But you can find out. It's my husband, Dr. Claxton. this door locked. Your wife's worried about you, friend. She thinks you're in trouble. Would you please go away and let me alone? Let's talk it over, friend. It can't be as bad as that. Are you going to unlock this door or do I have to break it down? Now listen, Claxton. I'm standing in this open window. You break down that door and I'll chop. Killing yourself won't solve anything. Think of your wife, man. I am. At least this way she'll get the insurance. What about the suicide clause in your policy? This won't be a suicide, it'll be an accident. Well, I know something about doctors and hospital bills. They can't put you in jail for owing money. No, but they can't for stealing. I embezzled $5,000 of the bank's funds. $5,000. You don't value your life very highly, do you? Nor your wife's. For the rest of her life, she'll remember that her husband killed himself to pay for her illness. You'll make her pay your debt while you take the easy way out. Easy way out. I've been through plenty these last few hours. You know, that's funny. I conducted a funeral service this morning for a man worth ten million dollars. He told me the very same thing. It seems that he just lost his wife. By the way, you're a bank manager. Ben Selden. He's a member of our congregation. You and I are going to talk to him first thing in the morning. We might as well go to the district attorney. Selden has ice water in his veins. Well, maybe we can thaw him out a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm going to have a little talk with my boss. Your boss? Oh, yeah. He's a pretty good person to know. Especially when you're in trouble. He'll listen to you, too. Why don't you give him a try? Ben, you're a charitable man, a good humanitarian, and you profess a willingness to help the boy. Give him another 24 hours to make restitution. That's impossible. 
Bank examiners will be here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Well, then give them until 3. The boy wants to return the money in and clear his conscience and right himself before God. Why, it'll be an act of mercy to give him that chance. Very well, Doctor. He has until 3 o'clock. He's in your custody. Thank you, Ben. And, Doctor, a felony has been committed. So, of course, you realize I can't interfere with the due processes of law. The matter is out of my hands. Oh, he understands that, and he's prepared to give himself up to the authorities at that time. Good. Goodbye. Good news. We have until 3 o'clock. Five hours to raise $5,000. Yes. Yes, I'll hold on. Sig's back in town. Sig Sorrelson. Splendid. I've got a secretary in the wire. She's trying to locate him. Yes. I see. What time will he be there? I'll catch him. And thank you very much. He's due at the Fidelity Union Bank before noon to make a deposit. That's fine. Then you contact Sorrelson. Meantime, I'll check a couple of other prospects. I'm beginning to get a little of that faith that you've been trying to sell me on. It works. They've even named the bank after it. Fidelity. Come on. Mr. Harvey. Oh, hello, Tronel. What are you doing here? Aren't you with the wrong bank? I was waiting for a friend of mine. I tried to see if I can get some money from him. Now, losing that $5,000 has sure put me in a tough spot. Yeah, it's too bad, Tronel. Well, live and learn. <laughs> I'll see you, fella. I gotta go. Uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, uh, this $5,000 that I lost, uh, I've gotta get it back by uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Sounds like a real short-term loan. Uh, yeah, can you help me out? Uh, can you loan me $5,000? What? Look, I'll, I'll give it to you in a couple of days. Just as soon as I get a hold of this friend of mine. I'll give you $200 besides. Boy, it sounds like we're in trouble. You didn't rob the bank, did you? Uh, this is no time to be funny. Can you loan me the money? No, oh, I can't. You seem to forget that I also took a bath in that deal. Yeah, I know, but you got assets. I I'll give you a note. I I'll pay you interest. Oh, stop crying, will you? That's the trouble with you eager beavers. You always want something for nothing, and then when you get hurt, you want your money back. If it is your money or the bank's, uh, what did you mean by that? Let go of my What did you mean by it? I told you to take your hand off my arm. Not until you here, explain here, what you meant here. by that. Come on, what's going on here? This character's been pushing me around. Who are you, may I ask? George W. Harvey, investment broker. Anybody in that bank can vouch for me? No. And you? My name's Trinnell. I work at the Broadway Trust Company. You're a little off your beat, aren't you? Say, I've had my eye on you. What's your pitch? Tried to hold me up for 5,000 bucks. He did what? That's a lie. He tried to borrow it from him. He's already got $5,000 of mine. Yours or the bank's? Now listen. All right, now. You come along with me. But officer, I can't. I'm waiting for a man named Soros. Oh, that's a good name. Now you come along with me while we identify him. Please. All right, come on, everybody. Move along here. Break it up. Glad to see you, Doc. Hello. You're just in time to join us. I'm sorry I can't stay for lunch. I'm in a bit of a rush. Gentlemen, this is our sky pilot, as we say in the Western movies. Dr. Claxton, Mr. Bodine, and the unhappy gentleman there with the crackers and milk, Mr. Ellsworth. He's got the Wall Street mumps. How do you do? How do you do? I hate to break in on your no, lunch. Oh, not at all. I'll be with you in a minute. Sit down. Did you see what D and M Amalgamated did this morning? Yes. If you fellas had taken my tip last week, you'd have made yourselves a cool quarter of a million. Oh, uh, have something? A cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Really, I'm awfully pressed for time. Oh, now relax. Thank you for blood pressure. Now, uh, how about this fishing trip to Florida? Are we going? And uh, whose yacht are we going to use? Man, if my wife keeps a promise to go to Europe. Personally, I can't afford to go. Cost me a fortune for every day I stay away from the office. You'd spend it on the horses if you stayed here. Uh, waiter, bring me the check. Oh, we'll match for it. Uh, high serial number on a hundred dollar bill. Bill, I, I hate to be insistent. So, heaven can wait. This is important. I, I should have picked up the check in the first place. These fellows always nick me anyway. Now, doctor, what is it this time? A stained glass window? Underprivileged children? Or a new church? Bill, I need five thousand uh, dollars. That's a good round sum. I think it can be arranged. I'd have my secretary send you a check. No, I need it now. And it isn't for the church. It's personal. Personal? 
Yes, it's for a young member of our congregation. He's in a little financial difficulty. Now, wait a minute, Doc. I'm not in the loan business. If it's for the church or an organized charity, okay. Is there any greater charity than helping a fellow human in distress? <laughs> if I reasoned along those lines, I'd be broken a month. i tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a check right now for $5,000, made out to the church. If you want to use it for a personal loan, that's, that's up to you. I see. And knowing that would be embezzlement of church funds, I guess it gives you a good excuse. It's your ball. It's all yours, Bill. <laughs> See what I mean? Well, thank you. I hope you have a pleasant fishing trip. Good day, gentlemen. Good, Good day, day, Doctor. Good day. Oh, uh, waiter. Waiter. Please, thanks. Sergeant Dolan speaking. Yes, sir. I'll connect you with the lieutenant. Hey, look, Sergeant. It's nearly two o'clock. How much longer are you going to keep me here? Till we hear from your boss at the bank. He must eat a big lunch. Dr. Claxton. Right. How'd you find out where I was? From your wife. When I didn't find you at the Fidelity Bank, I called the hospital. Have you been booked yet? Not yet. Sergeant, I can vouch for this young man. Just a moment. Uh, what's your connection with the case? I'm his clergyman, Dr. Claxton, Broadway Temple. Oh, up in Washington Heights, eh? Uh, would you know Father Whalen of the Sacred Heart Parish up there? Oh, very well. We serve on several committees. A fine man. It's nice to know that uh, you men of the cloth get along together. Well, we're all in the same league, just on different teams. Hmm. I must remember that. Well, Lieutenant Reed. Did you see Sorrelson? No, he didn't show up. Then this had to happen. Less than an hour. It's no use. We might as well go back to the bank. Buck up, man. There's still Sorrelson. Well, there's no charges preferred. The lieutenant said he can go. Thank God. And one of his ball players. Say hello to Father Whalen for me. Sorrelson's office would be on the 20th floor. Thank goodness we can take an express. $2,570. That's just about half. Looks like your faith is worth about 50 cents and a dollar. His secretary said he'd be in his office at 3. And there he is. There's Sorrelson. Hey, Sig! Sig! Hey, wait a minute. Hey, don't close the doors. Don't close them. I gotta get out of here. Open the door. Oh, can't you stop this thing? I bet he can stop it. Hey, what? Well, that's it. There went our last chance. Missed him by a split second. Let's check his office and find out where he's gone. What's the use? Time's up. Uh, young man, I know it isn't customary. W would you mind taking us right down to the main floor without stopping? Let him stop. What difference does it make? It's really very urgent. What's the rush? You want to get me to jail quicker? It isn't three o'clock yet. No. And we just got time enough to get to the bank before the examiners. Faith, I've had it. But not enough. One has to believe. How can you believe in something that doesn't exist? Come, man, where is your courage? We still have ten minutes. You believe in miracles? Certainly, they happen every day. I'll need quite a lot. Since when is my dough not yours? What did I tell you? There you are, Mr. Selden. 
And thanks for giving me the chance. You better thank Reverend Claxton. Now I must report this matter. But I think in view of the extraordinary circumstances, your wife's illness, your making restitution, the bank will be very lenient in making charges. You already have three good character witnesses. <laughs> the bank examiners are here, Mr. Self. I'll be right with them. Good luck, Fred. Oh, you'd better call your wife. She's worried. You know, Dr. Claxton, I haven't been in this bank for months. I don't know why I didn't deposit that money downtown this morning. What sent me away up here to the Broadway Trust? Why did you and Fred come along just in time to save me from that truck? Seems like I've been in a dream. God knows what happened to me today. God knows. Next week at this time, the Chevrolet dealers present another dramatic story based on actual experiences of American clergymen on crossroads. And here's next week's star, Brian Donlevy. Hello. Welcome to our jungle home. Nice and peaceful here now, isn't it? But you wait till next week. You know, we spent many pleasant hours here shooting the show you're going to see on this program next week. It's called Mr. Liberty Bell. It's just packed with thrills and action and suspense. I think you're going to like it. These dramatic stories are presented with the cooperation of our Board of Advisors. Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum.